Since the human being started to understand the world around them, we have the necessity to put the things in some category. Talking about life, it's not different. And how we do it? Well, at first sight, putting the things which to us looks like the same thing in some aspects together. Again, Aristotle gave us the first notion of the classification of living things. According his observations, there were two types of living things, animals and plants. It was based in the ability of move. If it moves, it was an animal. If it don't, it was a plant. He was the first to separate the animals in groups. The first division was between animal with blood and without blood. What it means without red blood. And it is compared with the division between vertebrates and invertebrates. He separated the blooded animals into five groups. Viviparous quadrupeds, mammals, Oviparous quadrupeds, reptilians and amphibians, birds, fishes, and whales. Yes, at this point, whales are considered a separate group because they of this external appearance. The bloodless animals are separated also into five groups. Cephalopods, crustaceans, insects, which include the all insects, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, and their relatives, shelled animals, such as most mollusks and echinoderms, and zoophytes, animals that resemble plants. Despite the of knowledge at that time, Aristotle made an excellent job making a classification without wrongs. And, one more time, it was the truth for almost 2,000 years. With the explorations of Americas in 16th and 17th century, a large plant and animals come to knowledge of the European scientists, and a big work started to classify them based in their anatomy. When we talk about a classification, we remember about binomial nomenclature and lineals, but at first we need to go back more than 100 years ago in Switzerland. Gaspard Bauhin was a Swiss botanist that in 1623 published Pinax Tweet Botanic, used by the first time in what we call binomial nomenclature, describing some 6,000 species using genera and species. And most of that classification was used by Linnaeus posteriorly. Finally, in 1735, the Swedish Carl Linnaeus published the first part of the Systema Nature, what formalizes the binomial nomenclature to science. All the work was released until 1793. The most important was the 10th edition, released in 1758, named Systema Nature per Regna Tria Nature, Secundum Classes, Ordines, Genera, Species, Cum Caracteribus Diferentes Synonymes Losses, what it means, System of Nature through the Three Kingdom of Nature, according to classes, orders, genera and species, with characters, differences, synonyms, places. This edition is considered the start point for zoological nomenclature. So, let's see how Linnaeus made his classification. In his Imperium Naturae, he established three kingdoms. Regnum animale, Regnum vegetabile, Regnum Lapideum. Today, it keeps in the popular mind when we ask, is it animal, 
vegetable or mineral. Regnum animali, animal kingdom. Mamalia. Comprised the mammals, but whales and West Indian manatee are classified among the fish. Aves. Comprised the birds. Linnaeus was the first to remove bats from the birds and classify them under mammals. Amphibia. Comprised the amphibians, reptiles, and assorted fishes that are not of ostates. Pieces. Comprised the bony fishes. This included the spine finned fishes, perciforms, as a separated order. Insect. Comprised all arthropods. Crustaceans, arachnids, and myriapodes were included as the order Aptera. Worms. Comprised the remaining invertebrates, roughly divided into worms, mollusks, and hard shelled organisms like echinoderms. Regnum vegetabile, plant kingdom. Using another system, the sexual system, he classified the plants and twinned four classes. Monandria, Giandria, Triandria, Tetrandria, Pentandria, Exandria, Eptandria, Octandria, Eneandria, Decandria, Dodecandria, Icosandria, Poliandria, Didinâmia, Tetradinâmia, Monadélfia, Diadélfia, Poliadélfia, Ginsenésia, Ginandria, Monoécia, Dioécia, Poligâmia, Criptogâmia. Regnum Lapidum, Mineral Kingdom, Classes 1, Petri, Rocks, Classes 2, Minere, Minerals and Ores, Classes 3, Fossilia, Fossils and Aggregates. Of course, the Mineral Kingdom is not formed by living things, but remember, the human mind has a necessity to put all things in some box with a definition. Leaving that aside, according to Linus, the life is divided in two kingdoms, Animalia and Vegetabilia. The things began to change in 1818 when the German naturalist George August Godfus introduced the word protozoa to refer to organisms such as ciliates and corals. In 1838-39, the Germans Theodor Schwann and Matthias Jakob Schleiden established the cell theory and with it, in 1848, another German, Karl Theodor Ernst von Siebold, included in protozoa just the animal-like unicellular organisms, such as foraminifera and amoeba. In 1860, the British John Hogue created the fourth kingdom of nature, the Protoctista, that included what he saw as primitive unicellular forms of both plants and animals. Finally, in 1866, the German Ernest Haeckel removed the minerals from taxonomy, leaving the classification with the three kingdoms, protista, primitive forms, plantae, and animalia. In 1925, Edouard Chaton established for the first time the terms prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell, 
to be simple. Prokaryotic cells lack a membrane-bound nucleus. Mitochondria or any other membrane-bound organelle and eukaryotic cells have this kind of membrane. But prokaryota and eukaryota are not kingdoms but empires, a level above kingdoms. In 1938, the American Herbert Faulkner Copeland grouped unicellular organisms in two kingdoms, Monera and Protista. All unicellular organisms that are prokaryotic was put in the kingdom Monera and the eukaryotic in the Protista kingdom. According to him, there were four kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Plante, Animalia. In 1969, the American Robert Harding Whittaker made one of the, for me, most important statements about classification of life. He established that fungi are not plants, but another organism that must be separated from plants. He was the first to propose the five kingdom classification. After him, what we had is Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plante, Animalia. In 1990, the Americans Carl Richard Vos and George Edward Fox discovered a kind of microbial life that is distinct from bacteria in the eukaryotes, which they call the archibacteria. So, the kingdom Monera was divided in two domains, bacteria and archaea, and the other kingdoms are put together in the eukarya domain. In 1998, the British Thomas Cavalier Smith introduced the kingdom Chromista. In spite of some controversial, his system of classification of all organisms is the last revision that we have. In this point, he separated the living organisms in two empires, Prokaryota and Eukaryota. In Prokaryota, there is one kingdom, Bacteria, divided in two subkingdoms, Eubacteria and Archibacteria. The empire Eukaryota is divided in five kingdoms, Protozoa, Chromista, Fungi, Plante, and Animalia. In a revision in 2015, he divided the bacteria in two kingdoms again, Bacteria and Arc. So, what we have today is two empires and seven kingdoms. Empire Procariota, kingdoms Bacteria and Arc, Empire Eukaryota, Kingdoms Protozoa, Chromista, Fungi, Plante, and Animalia. Now we can look at every kingdom and see what defines every one of them. And I will do specific videos about these groups. See you.